So this case is the case of a 50 years old woman uh, who has an infiltrant tumor of the right breast. She had a previous uh, chemotherapy and it is plain uh, that she, this patient will have uh, some radiotherapy after the mastectomy. And uh, we plan to do uh, a mastectomy with the resection of the neck. And you can see uh, before uh, that if you close the skin directly, you will have so much tension and uh, you may have uh, some uh, complication uh, like bad wound healing and uh, you need to remove uh, the implant. So uh, to uh, correct the skin defect, we plan to do an abdominal advancement flap. And in this case, we will use uh, an expander because this patient will have a post mastectomy radiotherapy. So for the measure, you uh, take uh, the distance of the skin that you are going to remove and uh, you uh, report this distance of the abdominal area and uh, you draw uh, the future uh, inframammary fold. The second line corresponds to the undermining of the uh, abdominal skin. And all the skin will go up and we will recreate all the shape of the breast. So uh, we do the mastectomy, uh, no interest to show that. Uh, and after that, uh, we will start by doing uh, the implant pocket. Uh, today, uh, for the same case, uh, I think uh, we will use an expander with the meshes or ADM, but uh, a few years ago, we don't have any meshes or ADM. So uh, we use the fascia of uh, the serratus. So uh, this is a classical uh, implant pocket behind uh, the pectoris major. And we will cut all the insertion of the muscle, the lower insertion. And by doing this, we will create sufficient space to put the expander. <laughs> so a bit long. So you have to go as far as you can to create the place and you want to, your expander goes uh, at the inner part of the breast. You cut the lower <coughs> insertion of the peak major. And after doing this, you will raise the fascia of the serratus. So you have the pocket behind the muscle and this is this tissue that you are going to raise. <coughs> and this fascia is very thin. That's why today we are using, we prefer to use uh, meshes or ADM. And this is the same thing, you have to go as deep as you can to have sufficient laxity to be able to, to close the implant pocket. And with the abdominal advancement flap, you will also increase the implant pocket.
and we were lucky for this patient. She has quite good quality of the fascia, but sometimes the fascia is very thin. And uh, you do some holes into the fascia. So the covering of the, the expander is not good. We have already done the abdominal advancement flap, as Nicolas showed us before. And we will recreate the inframammary fold. This is the fascia of the serratus. And you can see that you have enough laxity. And we will cut the superfacialis fascia to recreate the new inframammary fold. This is the same technique of the hammock. And you will fix the inferior border of the incision to the chest wall. Okay, we are going to fix it using Vicryl. At the inner part, it's very easy. You fix into the cartilage. You, go, you do the running suture, taking the inferior part of the fascia. And after that, you will fix your hammock to the chest wall at the external part. You adjust the height of the inframammary fold. This is the same technique that you saw before. But in this case, we, do, we didn't have a, a strong point to fix at the external part. So we fix the, the lateral part of the hammock to the cartilage. So you have to adjust the tension to have you in from away fall to the good level and you fix the hammock. You can put two or three more stitches to secure your suture to the chest wall and adjust the level of the inframammary fold. And after doing this, so you, are, you have corrected the skin defect, you have a nice implant pocket and you will have a full coverage of the exp expander. <coughs> this is the implant pocket with tissue of good quality. This is the fascia of the serratus, the muscle, and you can put easily the expander that you have inflated with 150 cc. You will suture the inferior part of the pectoris major to the subpectoral fascia and add the external part to the fascia of the serratus.
I have a question, if I may. You have a perfect skin envelope, not very traumatized at all. You have a perfect muscle coverage. You recreated the inframammary foam. Why do you put a, an expander in? <laughs> <laughs> Because she, she will have. It means that uh, how radiation therapy is only for deflating uh, part of the expander during the radiation therapy. This is the only uh, uh, reason. I, I, I beg to differ. Uh, I beg to differ, Mr. Doctor. I think that the best reason in such a patient to put uh, an implant, a definitive implant, is radiation therapy. Because she's going to have radiation therapy. I would put a definitive implant in her anyhow. But why now, in a perfect skin envelope, with a perfect muscle coverage, do this and then give radiation therapy and then operate on radiated tissue with an incidence of complication that's been shown to be 54%. The incidence of complication, this is written uh, five years ago in PLS by the group from Mass General in Harvard. And the incidence of complication operating on radiated tissue with implants is extremely high on a secondary procedure. Uh, if, if, if you wanted her to have a lower incidence of capsule contracture, if that is your issue, then you should put an ADM. If you, but, but, but the radiation itself, I mean, how, are you going to put an ADM in her in the second stage? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. But it, like we said before, it's uh, um, we work in a team, so we have to deal with the radiation therapist. And until today, we have all seen radiation therapists are demanding for uh, uh, small volumes. Yeah, so the radiation therapist and, 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 and cancer risk oncologist have no idea of what of what you're doing. They have no idea. If you provide them a mound that has no tension and that has good gut supply in it, they couldn't care less if inside there is a definitive implant or a tissue expander. It should not make any difference in the radiation therapy if it is this or it is that. And if you can, if you can refrain from doing another surgery on radiated tissue, the radiation <coughs> oncologists need to be educated yeah. by you. Sure. This, this, this is how it goes. But it takes because, time. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. It takes time. But this is a team effort. And having the radiation therapy dictate to you, <coughs> put a tissue expander because we're going to do radiation therapy, this is like, I call it friendly fire. You know what friendly mm. fire is? Yeah. It's when your troops are killing your soldiers. <laughs> They're a member of the team. The patient is the first member. He should be a perfect candidate. Not small, not small that. The surgeon should, is the other one. He should be the one responsible, if you're not doing a mastectomy yourself, to provide you with perfect flat. You are the third one to make the right decision how to close no tension tissue expander or definitive implant, ADM, yes or no. And the radiation oncologist is the fourth member of this team. And if he doesn't play a team game, He's going to do friendly fire and kill everybody else's efforts. And they're totally wrong by asking you to put a tissue expander in. This is a perfect case that you could have finished in one stage because she is a perfect envelope to cover your foreign virus. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you should do this after that. Uh, but yes, for this case, we, we use. Uh, the expander, and as you said, we have a well definition of the inframary fold, uh, no tension on the scar, and uh, after that, we will deflate uh, the expander after the radiotherapy. Thank you.